What if that nagging feeling in the back of your neck was real? What if those hands reaching out from the dark that you believed were there, were there? What if the monster in the basement really existed? And what if there was really something under the bed? Would you have the courage to face your fears? Hello, brave souls. I'm your host, Paul Rondeau, and tonight's story is the fourth part of the I used to work at a gas station in the middle of nowhere story I wrote. So here it is. I hope you enjoy. I've always enjoyed working nights wherever I work. If I wasn't working somewhere at night, I would toil away working on some type of passion project in the middle of the night. This one night has changed the way I look at the night. It is no longer my place of solace, but something to be respected and sometimes feared. It all started in my first week closing by myself. I was still getting used to all the duties that I had to complete. Stocking the shelves, front facing all the products, and restocking the cooler, along with all the cleaning that needed to be done. It all seemed a bit overwhelming for the one person to accomplish on their own. But I really needed this job, so I pushed forward. That's probably the reason I didn't notice them at first, when I was rolling some trash out of the back dumpster. There were two kids standing in front of the front door of the store. Both were not dressed for the weather at all. I couldn't put my finger on it at the time, but something seemed off about these two. It wasn't that weird to get teenagers out here in the middle of the night. Most were either trying to score a pack of smokes or try to buy a beer. This was met with a no on the night I worked, so they tended not to come in when they saw my truck out front. I hadn't seen these kids before, so I said hi and walked into the store. I figured they were building up the courage to come inside and buy beer. I stood at the counter expecting them to come inside, but they just stood at the front door. They had turned when I walked by and were faced toward the front of the store. They were staring at the ground. I didn't know what to make of this, and I figured I'd just go stock the coffee bar while I waited for them to do whatever they were going to do. After 15 minutes of this, I had had enough. I hadn't yet seen much of the horrors I'd seen now, so I assumed they were just kids messing around with the guys working at the gas station. I walked out front and asked if they needed any help. They just stared at the ground like I hadn't even said anything at all. I asked if they needed anything, and one of them said they were cold. I told them to come inside and warm up. I asked if their parents were, but they didn't say anything to that. I asked how they got here, it was met with more silence. This seemed like a good time to call the police. I started to walk back to the phone when all the lights went out of the building. I could hear the kids crying now as I felt around my pockets for my cell phone. I finally managed to grab a hold of my phone and flick the light on when the crying stopped. I panned the light around and yelled for the kids. Hey, where are you? My heart skipped a beat when I spun the camera toward one of the entrances. Standing there was one of the kids, but they were finally looking forward. Its skin was pale white, and its eyes were black as coal. It stared directly at me, smiling. I asked where its friend went, but it didn't answer. I heard laughing from the other entrance, and saw the other child standing there. Same pale skin and coal black eyes. With a giant smile on its face like the other one, they both started to laugh in unison, and I didn't know what to do. This kind of thing didn't happen in real life. You always think you'll either be the fight or flight type of person. But what really happened was worse. I was paralyzed with fear and their laughs bore into my mind. Their laugh was all I could hear and it felt like I was starting to reach a breaking point. It felt like two stereo speakers blaring into my ears. After a moment, I broke free of the paralysis. Aware of the danger I was in. I didn't know what these things had in mind for me, but I was sure it wasn't anything good. I didn't want to pin myself into a place I couldn't get out. That meant the back room, cooler, and storage area were no-go. That left me with staying here and trying to withstand the overwhelming laughter, or I could gather my courage and try to make a break for one of the entrances. Standing still didn't seem to be working, so I grabbed the closest fire extinguisher and decided that I was getting out of here whether they liked it or not. As soon as I picked up the extinguisher, the laughter ended. They just stared in silence now. Their eyes followed me everywhere I walked. 
I decided the front door was going to be my escape because my truck was closest to it. I walked toward the front door, and the smile on its face melted away, replaced by the terrified look of my manager. She asked me if I was okay, and I completely just broke down. She told me she realized that she didn't tell me about the backup generator we had in the back. It popped in her head because all the lights went out in town. She asked why I had the fire extinguisher in my hands. I tried to explain what I had just been through, but it all came out wrong and didn't make much sense. She figured my imagination had just played tricks on me since I was stuck out here with no lights on for the past two hours. I told her it had been only like 15 minutes since the lights had gone out. She was pretty insistent that the lights had been out that long because that's how long she'd been trying to call the landline of the store. She said it looked a little too spooked and that she'd finished the last hour and close up. I didn't hesitate and I got in the truck and pulled away. As I was driving away though, I swear I saw the silhouette of two teenage kids in the rear view mirror waving at me. I almost didn't go back, but I really needed this job. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed the story. Come back next time for some more spooky stories. And uh, yeah, as always, remember to face your fears.